these radio waves are some of the biggest explosions in the world. When we look up at the sun, we are aware of how much power and energy it sends out into the universe. There isn't much that could be better than our sun. Still, beyond our star is Betelgeuse, a red supergiant star that is so huge it makes even the strongest solar giants look small. Betelgeuse is a star that is hard to explain because of its huge width, irregular pulsations, and unpredictable behavior. Scientists are amazed by its power and potential. But while they were looking at this beautiful star, they found something scary. We're going to talk more about what the James Webb Telescope found and how it could change everything. Betelgeuse can be seen in the sky if you look up at night in the Northern Hemisphere during the winter. This is something that most people don't know. It's easy to find. Just look at the constellation Orion and you'll see it as the orange-red star in the top left corner of the rectangle-shaped constellation. It's easy to find because it's one of the biggest and brightest stars in the sky. But if you've paid attention, you know that the star doesn't stay in the same place. It's one of the brightest stars when it's at its best, but sometimes it dulls a bit. There's more to it than that, you see. From here, it looks like just another star, but it's not. To begin, it's more than 640 light years away. That may not seem like a long way at first, but it's really quite far. Even if you could move faster than light, which we can't do, it would still take you more than 640 years to get to Betelgeuse. And even our fastest spaceships would take more than 12 million years to get there, which is longer than the history of all human culture on Earth. Moving farther away doesn't make the light change all the time, though. People call Betelgeuse a pulsing red supergiant, which means it's a big old star that gets bigger and smaller. And when it does, the sky can get brighter or darker. The changes in brightness can last for a very long time, from a few days to several hundred days. And to make things even stranger, Betelgeuse's brightness can range from almost plus zero, five to plus zero, which is a pretty wide range. Among these changes, the smallest lasts 185 days and the longest lasts 2,335 days. Bet loose can get very dim at times. Another name for this is a V-band magnitude. In February 2021, a magnitude of plus 1.614 was recorded as the lowest V-band magnitude in a while. It's not as bright as what we usually see from Betelgeuse, but it's still pretty bright. It's known for more than just being bright, though. Betelgeuse is a bright red star because its surface is very cool. Its temperature is only 3,500 Kelvin, which is much lower than the sun's temperature of 5,500 Kelvin. Because it is cooler than the sun, Betelgeuse gives off much less energy per unit of surface area. This is why, even though it is one of the biggest stars we know of, it looks much fainter. It's like a big person who doesn't need to show off their size to feel important. Just because Betelgeuse seems calm, doesn't mean it's not a supergiant star. It's about 20 times heavier than our sun. That's one reason why people study the stars so much. Betelgeuse has been a bright star in the night sky for a very long time. The old Greek astronomer Ptolemy was the first person to name it. In Arabic, it is called the armpit of Orion. When it was first named, there wasn't much known about it. But now that telescopes are more common, scientists can investigate this event in more depth. By looking at the light that Betelgeuse gives off, scientists have learned a lot about it, like how big it is, how hot it is, and what it is made of. The Hubble Space Telescope has taken clear pictures of the surface of Betelgeuse that show complex patterns of gas and dust. Researchers have been able to make models of the star's behavior and guess how it will change in the future based on these findings. The Cutting Edge Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array, ALMA Telescope in Chile, has also been used to study Betelgeuse. ALMA has taken very clear pictures of the surface of Betelgeuse, which show us new things about its structure and how it behaves. One of the most exciting things that ALMA has shown us is that stars have huge plumes of gas rising from their surfaces. This cloud, which is thought to be caused by Betelgeuse's pulses, might help explain why the star acts strangely and changes all the time. A process called convection makes Betelgeuse move back and forth. Hot gas rises and cooler gas falls. This movement makes waves that move through the star's atmosphere and make it grow and shrink. With the Hubble Space Telescope, we can see the surface of Betelgeuse in great detail. The gas and dust are arranged in very complex designs. Researchers have been able to make models of the star's behavior based on these findings to see how it might act in the future. There are also dark spots on the surface of Betelgeuse. 
These are star spots, magnetic spots, or places on the star's surface where the magnetic field is very strong. These areas are cooler than the gas around them because the magnetic field stops hot gas from moving from inside the star to the surface. This cools the gas and makes the spots look darker than the gas around them. People think that the magnetic field on Betelgeuse is a few thousand times stronger than the field on the sun. Gas on the star's surface gets stuck in loops or arcs because of this strong magnetic field. This creates areas of intense magnetic activity that can be seen as dark spots. Along with Betelgeuse, many other stars, even our sun, have what are called star spots. But the star spots on Betelgeuse are very interesting because they are bigger, and there are more of them than on the sun. Sometimes the spots on Betelgeuse are many times the size of Earth and cover up to 20% of the star's surface. Also, star spots can change the brightness of a star and make it shine at different times. This is because the spots are cooler than the gas around them so they give off less light. The spots move in and out of view as the star spins, which changes how bright the star is generally. For Betelgeuse, the star's pulsations also cause changes in its brightness, since the spots can move in and out of view, adding to the star's changeability. The strangest thing is that Betelgeuse isn't really unique like you might think. Some stars are kind of like it, but not all of them are exactly the same. Still, they are all very interesting. Antares, a bright supergiant in the constellation Scorpius, is related to Betelgeuse in the sky. Like Betelgeuse, Antares is a variable star, which means that its brightness changes over time. Antares is also very big, about 12 times bigger than the Sun, and its diameter is about 700 times bigger than the Sun's. This makes it pretty clear that Antares is not a shrinking violet. People often say that Mu Cephei, also called the Garnet Star and found in the constellation Cepheus, looks a lot like Betelgeuse. With a radius about 1,650 times bigger than the Sun, Mu Cephei is one of the biggest stars we know of. Mu Cephei is a variable star, just like Betelgeuse and Antares. It is also one of the largest red supergiants in the Milky Way. Even though Betelgeuse is different, all of these stars are interesting in their own ways. Some things that make each star unique are its properties and traits. It's interesting to learn about all of them and see how they vary. We'll use our sun as an example to show the difference because we all know a lot about it. Even though Betelgeuse, Antares, and Musefi are all red supergiant stars, they are not exactly the same. Each has its own things that make it stand out. One big difference between the three stars is how big they are. For instance, Betelgeuse is about 1,000 times the size of the Sun, and Antares is about 700 times the size of the Sun. Another star, Muchafai, is even bigger. Its diameter is about 1,650 times that of the Sun. The brightness of the three stars is another thing that makes them different. It has an apparent magnitude that ranges from 0.0, .0 to 1.3, making it one of the brightest stars in the sky at night. Antares also goes up and down in the same area, but sometimes it's a little brighter. But Mu Chefai is much brighter, and its apparent brightness changes from minus 3.4 to minus 5.1. The stars are also not all the same mass. Based on estimates, Betelgeuse is about 11 times as heavy as the Sun, and Antares is about 12 times as heavy. This means that the two stars are about the same size and brightness. Mu Chefe, on the other hand, is much heavier than the Sun. Its mass is thought to be about 20 times that of the Sun. Finally, each star has its own set of traits and ways of acting. As we already talked about in the movie, Betelgeuse is known for its pulsations, which make it brighter and darker over time. But Antares is ringed by a huge cloud of gas and dust, which might help explain why it acts in a strange way. Even though it's brighter than Betelgeuse, it doesn't look as bright because of the clouds and dust around it. While Betelgeuse is known for being very unstable, Mu Chefai is known for being very bright, making it one of the brightest stars in the sky. And even though we've already talked about the star's pulsations, color, and general behavior, they all point to the same thing. A supernova is about to happen, and it could happen very soon. A supernova sounds beautiful the first time you hear about it, and in a way it is. It's scary when you really start to understand it, though. In the end of their lives, some types of stars explode in supernovas, which are very powerful blasts. A lot of energy is released by these explosions, which make some of the brightest and most energetic events in the world. Type 1 and Type 2 are the two main types of supernovas. 
When a white dwarf star, which is the dense remnant of a low-mass star, takes in matter from a companion star until it hits a certain mass, a type 1 supernova happens. This starts a nuclear fusion process that gets out of hand, which blows up the star. There isn't much time left for the star, and when it bursts, it makes a lot of damage, but nothing compared to type 2. Type 2 supernovas happen when a star with a lot of mass runs out of fuel and can't make the nuclear processes that keep it together. In response, the star collapses in on itself and then explodes in a huge way. Very large amounts of energy are released as light, heat, and radiation when a supernova happens. Everything in its path is swept away. It is possible for the explosion to be so bright that it shines brighter than the whole galaxy the star is in. But this brightness will only last for a short time. The supernova will eventually go away, generally in a few weeks or at most a few months. It also makes a lot of heavy elements like iron, nickel, and gold when a supernova goes off. Nucleosynthesis is the process that makes these elements. It takes place in the explosion's high heat and pressure. After being broken up, these elements are sent into space where they can be used to make new stars and planets. It's kind of like a star dying to make room for new ones. We all know that it takes a lot to make a star, so this isn't just about leaving things behind. The shock wave from a supernova can actually make new stars form. It can also squeeze nearby clouds of gas and dust together enough to make planets form. In cosmology, supernovas are also useful because they let us figure out how far away galaxies are that we can't figure out any other way. Because supernovas always have the same brightest point, Scientists use them as standard candles to figure out how far away things are. Also, supernovas are very beautiful. The expanding cloud of gas and dust that is made by the explosion can be different colors and shapes based on the type of supernova and where it is. But the truth is that they're very dangerous, even though they look good. Radiation with a lot of energy is one of the main risks of supernovas. There is a burst of gamma ray radiation that comes from a supernova that can be thousands of times stronger than the energy that our sun gives off in its whole life. Because it is so strong, this radiation can kill all living things on Earth. It can damage DNA and other biological molecules, destroying the building blocks of life as we know it. It's also possible for a huge blast wave to happen. As a supernova bursts, it sends out a shock wave that can move through space at very high speeds and may hit other things in its way. Forces that make it possible for new stars and planets to form can also do the opposite. For example, if a supernova happened nearby, the blast wave could damage the Earth's atmosphere a lot and even wipe out whole species. Different researchers have different ideas about when Betelgeuse could go supernova. Different people say it might be tens of thousands of years away or just about to happen. But the amount of dimming suggests that the cosmic event may be much closer than we'd like. People think that Earth is a safe distance from the star, but things can get really crazy when things like this happen. Could the Earth be wiped out by the Betelgeuse supernova? Please answer the question and let us know what you think in the space below. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like it. See you in the next one.